Hey everybody, welcome to DIY Hi-Fi. Today we're going to be building the Passive Aggressive Mini Kit from Parts Express. It's going to be a lot of fun and a couple mistakes along the way, so stick around to see how we corrected those and where we went wrong. In this video we're going to go over some of the theory, we're going to build and measure this kit and see what kind of response we can get out of it. We're going to measure both frequency response and impedance, so stick around, you don't want to miss that. So let's jump over here to Parts Express and look at our kit. So we can see we've got some passive radiators here, got all our crossover components, got the flat pack, got our woofer and tweeter, another passive radiator. What's really cool about this kit is that they do dual passive radiators. That means there's a radiator on either side. This uses pretty good drivers. We've got a Dayton audio driver for our woofer. And then we've got a three quarter inch Dayton Audio tweeter here. And so next we've got our woofer here. We can see it's a three and a half inch aluminum cone full range Neo driver. What this means is we're gonna be using this as our woofer, but this could actually play the entire frequency range. We can see here, this will play from 65 Hertz up to 17K. Now there's gonna be some issues in those upper octaves. So that's why we're using a tweeter. Um, for, get, for better resolution. This has got large excursion, four and a half millimeters of X-Max, 25 peak. It's shielded. It's got 30 watts RMS of power handling. And let's go ahead and look at our frequency response of this woofer. So again, I'm calling it a woofer, but in reality, this is a full range driver. You can see from about a hundred Hertz up, we've got a really flat response all the way up to about 7K. And then we've got a lot of cone breakup, and these are our off-axis responses here. You can see it drops off pretty dramatically off-axis, but overall, a really good performing little woofer, full-range driver for such a cheap kit. And now we can come over here and look at our tweeter. So we've got a soft dome three-quarter inch Neo tweeter, and let's go ahead and check out the frequency response. So you can see starting at about 1.5K, we've got a really smooth response, really linear all the way up to 20K. And then we've got our off-axis response here, really smooth roll-off in the higher octaves. And let's talk about why we're using passive radiators. So we could just use a standard vent or a port tuning for this, but because this is such a small design, there's likely not enough length for the port, which is why they've chosen to use passive radiators. And that's just going to help us dig just a little bit deeper than we could if we were trying to port such a small enclosure. So just like every other Parts Express kit that we've built so far, everything came packaged super well, really well thought out, really well protected. So we can see I've got our flat pack laid out here, we've got our passive radiators laid out, we've got our woofer and our tweeter. This includes full instructions and they go over crossover layout and different things like that, cabinet assembly, we've got our crossover components, some fasteners. On the website, it said that binding posts were frequently bought together so I went ahead and ordered some separately but as it turned out they actually are included in this kit so no need to order those separately I'm not going to be using the wire that they supplied I really hated using that on the c-note kit so we're gonna go ahead and use some of our own so typically when I'm doing crossovers I'll do them at the point that I'm finishing the kit itself meaning I'm either spraying polyurethane or spraying lacquer or putting polyurethane on and this gives you downtime and that's a perfect time to build the crossover but in this case they are so small the enclosures that I really wanted to be sure that my board was going to fit in the enclosure prior to getting started they give you two and three quarters square for your crossover board so I've just snipped some cardboard it's probably better to use something like MDF but given how small the opening is for this I really didn't want to push it so you can see I'm just going to go ahead and glue down all my components first and then I'm going to twist up the legs, get those soldered together and then I'm going to be using wire to attach to that that will run to our speaker terminals and that will run to our individual drivers. And so if you're following along at this point, you're welcome to pause it and copy the layout. 
I'm sure there are better ways to lay this out, but this is the best way I could think of to get everything to fit in here and still have good coil orientation. So now that we've got our legs twisted over at least one good turn, we're just going to go ahead and start to solder. We've got a really hot iron here, and I'm just taking my time and making sure I've got really good, clean, strong joints. So I'm just going to do a quick little panorama here. If you're having trouble, just go ahead and pause the video and copy this layout. And so you can see what I've done here to help out my future self is I've gone ahead and labeled all of my leads here. I've done this because this enclosure is so small and it's going to be really hard to see what's going on inside here. I know this is going to come in handy later. So now we're ready to start our glue up process here. We're just going to use a ton of glue, get it all over our joints here. We're going to fold our cabinet together here. Now at this point you could clamp and leave this to set up. Personally I'm going to both clamp it and use some brad nails here. I think I'm using about a one inch really small gauge nail. You gotta be really brave to shoot into this half inch material, but if you take your time and keep the nail straight, you shouldn't have any issues. But if you're on the concern side, just clamp it and leave it for several hours. It'll be plenty strong on its own just like that. So now it's time to drill some binding post holes, and then we're gonna move right on to filling our brad holes. I'm using plastic wood here, but there's a ton of different fillers you can use. And if all you did was clamp, you can probably skip this step and move right on to sanding. So we're gonna hold our sander as flat as we can. We don't wanna round over any of our edges. And because we're gonna be applying veneer later on, we want as smooth of a working surface as possible. And it's also a good idea to try to rough up the surface to help out the glue with adhesion. And here's what our finished enclosures look like. They don't need to be perfect at this point. Moving right along, we're gonna use some contact cement here. I'm gonna roll that on really heavy to both my veneer and my enclosure, one panel at a time. Then we're gonna move on to rolling it on a nice firm roller here, getting all the air we can out, pushing down really hard so that we get really good adhesion. And then we're just going to take a blade and trim away the excess. We'll leave about a sixteenth on there and we'll sand that off by hand with a block. After that, I'm just going to take some 120 and uh, smooth out our openings here. After that, I'm gonna grab a bit, drill through our veneer here for our terminals. And then I'm gonna take some really high grit, something like a 400, and dust off all the little particles that are on the surface. After that, we're ready to move on to stain. I'm gonna use a dark espresso here one more time. I'm gonna put this on real heavy, and then we're just gonna wipe away the excess with a clean rag. Want to get everything off there that we can. All the oil and we're going to let that dry for several hours. After that stain is dried it's time to go on with some spray lacquer. I'm spraying on several light coats to begin with about a foot away good part about lacquer is that it dries really quickly so you're able to apply multiple coats in the same day rather than waiting. The next day I've gone ahead and hit this with some 400 grit. We're not looking to take all of our lacquer off we're just looking to smooth it out a little bit. You can see I've got one here that's been done and the other has not yet been sanded. When we wipe away we're not trying to wipe away all of this. Lacquer is self wetting so we can reapply and it will rehydrate this undercoat. And so we'll get one more coat on there and then we're going to get these things put together. So it's really tough to see on camera, but 
This kit is incredibly small. I want to just go ahead and show you my hand, which is relatively small for scale here. Not a lot of room to work. So we've got our first crossover board in there, making sure we've got everything laid out and oriented correctly. We're going to have enough space for our drivers. Remember, we've got passive radiators on either side of this enclosure, so we've got to make sure all of our wires are out of the way, otherwise we're going to run into mechanical noise. I'm just going to go ahead and get my connectors on here. Give them a little tug. Go ahead and get our driver secured, run in a little pilot hole, and I'm going to screw these in by hand just because our material is so thin. Just getting them all nice and snug. Here's our first finished crossover installed with our full range driver and our tweeter installed. You're going to see why this is a problem here in just a little while. And here's our second board oriented correctly as it should be. Nothing's rubbing. Go ahead and get our passive radiators on both of these things and then we're going to do some testing. So I'd say I'm relatively happy with how these turned out. I used a satin lacquer and unfortunately the opening for this recessed tweeter is just so small. Even with a sharp blade I got a little bit of tear out which was really disappointing. No real easy way to fix that um, but I'm going to roll with it. The edges need a little bit of attention, which I didn't see in the sunlight since it's cured, but overall I'm pretty happy with this. Okay, it's time to whip out our mic here, make some measurements. We're doing these on axis about 16 inches away from our tweeter. I'll run our first sweep here, full range, running this in Roo with a UMIC 1. This is going to be a gated measurement. 4.4 milliseconds. We can see we've got a pretty high rising response in the top few octaves. Go ahead and run our second channel here. Go ahead and get that gated. can see we've got a pretty similar response to our first channel. And then referring back to the documentation they provided, our response matches up really well with theirs. All right, now let's run some impedance sweeps on these guys. I'm going to use the DATS V3 for this. Get them connected here. So our first sweep looks great. It looks exactly like it should on the sheet that they've given us. Let's run our second sweep and we're gonna run into a problem here. Uh-oh, what's going on there? So the astute among you will have noticed this first crossover was jammed right into an inductor. That Neo magnet not only pushing it over but now sitting right up next to it. How I filmed this and didn't notice, I have no idea, but let's get these out of here, get them reoriented, and we're going to run another sweep. So, now we've got a much better alignment here, still a really, really tight fit. Going to make sure our passive radiators aren't bumping into any of our wire now that we've reoriented everything. We're going to check both of these. Be really careful, listen and feel. This is a really tight fit. With that wing nut swapped around, it will bump into your magnet. So we're going to go ahead and run our impedance sweeps one more time on both units. So our first one comes out great, just as we expected. And here's our second channel. This is the one we had trouble with before. Now, just like we expected. 
So what are my final thoughts on the passive aggressive kit from Parts Express? Well, it was a pain to build. There's no way around it. It was really, really tedious. The enclosure assembly and finishing was pretty simple and straightforward, especially given the size. It wasn't very difficult. The final assembly was by far the most tedious aspect of this, and if you're short on patience, I do not recommend this kit whatsoever. If you've got big hands, I don't recommend this kit whatsoever. And if you're going to do it anyway, make sure you've got a small set of hands around to help. Let's talk about use cases for these. I think these would be perfect for all the little Class D amps, desktop amplifiers that we're seeing, especially a 2.1. If you put together one of Parts Express little subwoofer kits, I think this would be a perfect little full range mixing setup. For any amateur musician or producer, I think these would be really good. Um, I did set them up in my typical listening position and I got really good full range response out of them. Um, imaging was really solid, not quite as solid as others, but good enough. Uh, the center image was really focused and precise, which was really cool. So. With dual passive radiators and that big tang band woofer, I know everyone's curious about what the bass response is like. With these closer to a wall, you're probably going to get a little more output, but really they do need a subwoofer. With that said, given how tiny they are, they're about as tall as a can of coke. They put out a ton of bass for as small as they are, but they're not going to go shaking your walls, so a subwoofer is definitely still recommended. So for overall ratings, I'm going to give these about an 8 out of 10 for a cool factor and about a 6 out of 10 for sound quality. So everybody that stuck around this long, thank you so much for watching. Thank you to everybody that subscribed. It's been so cool to see everyone watching and enjoying. We've got a ton more coming up. I'm thinking about doing some Goodwill speaker hunting adventures, seeing what we can find and bring it back and measure everything just for fun. And then we're going to be doing some ground up builds as well as some more kits so stay tuned i've got so much to come and i'm so glad you're all here to be a part of it so thanks for watching and we'll see you next time